friends so finally we are here ready with our second part of the t loop series so in this video we will study about the 10 things you should know about t loop and its activation so myself dr ram and without wasting any time we are moving to the first most important thing which is the correct t loop design so reason being i have intentionally kept this as the first because many people don't know how which design is the correct for example this is the first photograph this is the second and this is the third so which one is corrected so if you see the first photograph in this the width of the t loop is 10 millimeter and the loops thickness is 2 millimeter same in the second photograph and the third photograph so but if you see the first <coughs> vertical distance this is 5 millimeter and this is 4 millimeter in this case both is 5 and 5 and in this case the distance between the vertical arms is quite large so which is correct one two three so the best design for the t loop if you want be, uh, is depends upon our need in the first photograph we, we have to insert this wire in the auxiliary slot because not in the main slot that's why it's four millimeter or if it's beta arm. in case if this arm is alpha arm in the anterior arm we can use this only if we want to intrude the anterior segment or if we have intruded the anterior segment or we want to just maintain the plane what this t loop will do this t loop will be like a continuous wire it's correctly mentioned the continuous arch wire so this will uh, close for the n mass phase closure this can be used and in the segmental also this can be used and by inserting this in the main slot not in the auxiliary slot in this t loop many people made the vertical height very large so in this t loop you can see there is 12 millimeter 12 millimeter is good for increasing the moment to force ratio but our vestibule allows only 10 millimeter of the height so this is also not correct but we can customize any of this design as per our need we can modify its vertical dimensions say for an example if you want to intrude it by 2 millimeter if you have intruded the entire segment by 2 millimeter you can keep it 3 also you can keep it 3 also and you can reduce the uh, reduce the vertical height also in the in cases in which vestibular depth is not much if it is around 8 millimeter only so you can reduce the vertical height also so as per your case we have to choose the design right now the second thing is how why to activate t loop and what is the correct moment to force ratio for translation the reason is we uh, activate the t loop because by stretch by stretching the loops we can give a horizontal force but movement is not produced and you all know movement is necessary for root uprighting if we you can go through this the moment is also called as counter balancing moment because your force is retracting your teeth but your root tries to come forward your crown tries to tip back so it counteracts that forward root movement. So it is called as counterbalancing movement produced by the net force that is applied. So we need one gram force for movement of the crown, then 10 times counterbalancing movement for translation. That means for bodily movement of the tooth, the ratio is 10 is to 1. And if we want to the root movement, the torque movement, the ratio should be 10 is to 1 so we activate t loop because we want more uprighting so in cases the canine is distally tipped or the molar is measly tipped you can vary the alpha and beta bends for desired tooth movements i hope it's clear now now the third question is t loop pre-activation this photograph is taken from marcot and in many places in the textbooks you will find this diagram only which is in which you will see a t loop made in 1725 tma the there are six bends one two the corresponding to this is the second and the third fourth fifth sixth and seventh in the till the fourth bend they are given it by a bird big plier or the wire bending light wire plier and next bends were given by three prong pliers so this is the final image of the activated t loop now it looked like starbucks logo but guys try to notice that in many places these bends are given but what what is this angulation this is not given 
what is this angulation and what is the distance of the t loop this is not given and if you try it, just try to give activation bends on your own then you will realize these are excessive bends uh, what i am saying i'll clarify further if we know the bend intensity how much bend we have given and by three prong prior they are giving a kind of a continuous curve which is not possible so there is at many places you will find these diagram in that authentic textbooks the standard textbook but still it's quite doubtful how can by three prong prior you are giving a continuous curve which can be given by on the arch contouring plier this is okay this is also okay this is also okay but the net result will not be like this it's not like this so our next question is activation bend value what is the activation bend values i found this photograph and it says it should be 40 degree it should be 15 it should be 13 this is 20 so in clinical practice it's not possible to measure all these bands and i i it's very difficult to measure all these bands so at other photograph also i saw they have given the numbers one two three four these are the bands by universal plan and five six basically uh, they further activates it eventually if you try to give bands at this position and this much value this will not look like that starbuck logo what i meant like this it will not look like this so what is correct i myself tried to give the bends but it did not become like this like the continuous one so what is the activation bend value so the answer to this query is the one and two bend is 30 degree only it is given in the loop bilaterally and third and fourth bend it is two millimeter away from this leg of the t loop this is the third and fourth bend which is 25 degree and two millimeter further this is fifth and sixth bend bilaterally which is 25 degree again so even if you don't know any bend so eventually your final t loop should look like this this should be the cf shape of your final t loop if you follow the correct bends it should it will not be like this you saw in the previous photographs so this is excessive bend but you may give if you need more movement to counterbalance the tooth movement right so the anti-rotation band many people don't know about anti-rotation band and those people who know about the anti-rotation band they don't know whether we should give it before trial activation or after trial activation and whether it's given in the legs only or in the loop also this is given so my answer to all this query is the in uh, the anti-rotation bands if you see from buckle aspect that this is given first in the loop corresponding on the second part of this also similar and then it's given in the legs of the loop also the anti-rotation bends the purpose of this anti-rotation bends is to avoid the molars from rolling out and to avoid the canines from rolling out so the in in this diagram you can also appreciate the anti-rotation bends which is given in alpha and beta arm. the alpha and beta arm are basically anterior and posterior arms of the t-loop which may vary as per need of or like if you are using it on the right side on the left side this alpha and beta may change so don't be confused about alpha and beta bands they are just anterior and posterior arms of the t-loop we call these bands as alpha and beta bands i hope it's clear now how much bend is given so again this is a question which is not given in the standard books like nanda the marcot the biomechanics book uh, uh, profit and op karbanda also this is not given so these are the kind of standard textbooks in which this answer is not given you have to go through many articles or the review of t loops to get this answer so the answer is first and second band it is given in the loop itself it's 25 degree and the third and fourth band is also 25 degree which is given in the loop so this band is also 25 degree and this band is also 25 degree now the one more question arises how to measure this those who know this technique of measuring the bends please comment below so that i may get to know that you know this or you don't know this those who don't know leave also a message because these are some small small tricks people do they don't know how to quantify it so you may just let me know whether you know the technique or not so and 
now the trial activation when you have to do the trial activation or when you have to give the anti rotation band trial activation is done before giving anti rotation band so please remember before anti rotation bands you have to give a trial activation and how to check how to check trial activation is by checking the neutral position of a loop so neutral position is checked in all the loops in a similar manner so if you know that neutral position then it's well and good if you don't know then also you can comment below and i'll i'll share a photograph and i'll explain it further it's quite easy so that's why i have not involved neutral position is quite easy now the another question is whether we have to give a sharp bends like we have seen in the previous diagram this is sharp bends or the smooth curvature so what does the literature say about this if this is correct or this is correct i i think both are correct and i uh, i make t loop in the stma wire by universal plier the light wire plier so my t loops normally becomes like this it is very difficult to give bilateral symmetry by three prong plier to make a, such a symmetric t loop even if we have to make this as much symmetrical i i would use a, a arch contouring plier rather than three prong plier to reach this type of t loop starbucks so the literature says the, the concentrated bands the concentrated bands are this these bands and these are smooth bands the curvature bends the smooth bends promote a better internal distribution of stress during bends since the bending movement is distributed throughout the thread this reduces the chance of permanent deformation making possible to form larger pre activation on the wire but the concentrated bends are also angled bend and do not occur exactly between the horizontal and vertical loops of the the most important thing is now as the gable bends they present a risk of permanent deformation due to stress relaxation compromising the microstructure of the thread due to small breaks so the the bends actually acts as a kind of break but still it's uh, whatever movement i desire i can bend it i can uh, give the rotation bends and any other bends in the uh, gable bends in the t loop so i make the concentrated bends in the t loop and it works it actually works but if you have made a t loop and how will you check whether you have made it correct or not so you need a template so where is the template how can you get the template for the t loop so the answer is there are many articles which are giving a template image so you can make a t loop giving a light size you can uh, take the print as per the dimensions of the t loop like keeping this as 10 and then checking the magnification on the print just get the, the print of these uh, these images and you can make your t loop by keeping your t loop on this template so this is the answer for this you can make your t loops like this all i will recommend if you were confused about which t loop you should be used whether concentrated bends or this or this i'll recommend on the one side on the can i give this loop on the other side this give this loop so whatever works for you use that so we have cleared till now now where to place the t loop in the continuous watch was if you see the diagram this is a continuous watch for and and mass retraction by t loop we have inserted in the auxiliary slot so this is four this is five and we have activated it so whether we have to keep the we keep t loop in the continuous wire is near the molar or in the middle or towards the canine so the answer of all these questions is encourage if you want maximum increase towards molar because we want more movement and the distal tipping of the crown of this molar so we need more of that so it's group a anchorage group a means maximum anchorage moderate anchorage in the somewhere in the middle and minimum anchorage towards the canine so your concept has to be movement in force has to be very clear to understand these loops if you have any doubt you can comment below and i'll explain the movement force and everything related to any v band or any v band principle or intrusion extrusion with v bands anything whatever you ask me i'll explain so how the t loop works so t loop works basically sorry v t loop works basically on the principle of movement and force if you stretch the t loop and 
just uh, lock it so this there is a horizontal component will work on this and it will push push these teeth back so initially their tipping occurs once you cinch and activate the steel loop so one in the initial phase if 6 mm of activation it will produce more force and less of the movement and tipping movement occurs but when the tooth tips the force decreases and the counteracting movement increases so it uprights so the translation movement occur and later on what happens on 6 mm of deactivation there is root movement because if you see the distance between the legs initially it was 6 mm now it has decreased so the movement works the hori no horizontal force is there so there is root movement so torquing movement not exactly torquing you may call it second order bend also the root tips distally so i hope this is clear in the next photograph oh sorry in the next video we will demonstrate you the activation method how you do it clinically uh, activation pre-activation of the t-loop etc all the men's i'll try to explain in case you have any problem then let me know let me know and thank you very much thank you